Hey folks, welcome back to part three of the fairing video. Uh, I was finally able to get the brackets in the mail. Um, so this video, I will be covering the installation of the belly as well as the side panels. Now, some of you might already have these brackets as I mentioned in the previous video. Um, for the Indian models, as I was told, uh, these come stock, but for US and England models, um, you'll have to purchase these separately. Um, so yeah, this will basically slide right between uh, the frame and a uh, neat little bracket that will basically protect the cooling lines as well as the oil filter. The other two brackets that you'll see is one has a single hole. This goes on the left side and then the one with two openings uh, goes on the right side. So to begin, we will be removing this bolt. It's a 14 millimeter, uh, and for the nut in the back, it's a 916. And you gotta do that for both the sides. Just for the right side, be very careful. There is a hard line right here. So as you're twisting that nut on the back, uh, just be cautious to not damage this line. Now for these two little brackets, this is the bolt we're after. Uh, I'm using a number eight Allen head key. Um, to loosen that up and twist it right out. Same thing on the other side. On the other side, you will actually see there's a plate though that has the welded nuts on the back, so it's much easier. So for the right side, for some reason, the header is closer to the frame, so I'm not able to slide the the Allen key in there. Um, what I ended up doing is I just loosened out the middle bolt just a bit and also the header bolts, uh, probably a couple turns. So as you can see, I just have enough wiggle room in here. Um, so I can pull this back and I'm able to slide the key in there. And then from there, just twist it. I tightened everything up just to give you a quick overview. Uh, those two brackets right there, the headers are tightened. And we are going to be using this bracket uh, on top of the sum guard bracket. And this is going to get tied with the belly pan. And of course, we're going to be securing it with uh, those two brackets in the back. So the belly is in. And as you can see, that bracket is self-threaded, so you don't really need nuts on the back, so that's easy. And these two bolts aligned perfectly well. <laughs> Actually, throughout this kit, this is probably the only holes that align perfectly. And one another thing to be mindful of, um, the center stand does not work with this belly. Uh, this spring actually contacts the plate on the side. So my guess is this is probably only made for the GT model. Um, I know the GT does not come with this center stand. I installed this myself. The interceptor, however, does. So if you're planning on putting this kit on the interceptor, just a heads up. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the depth tool out. I'm just going to grind it, uh, cut a little rectangle out of there, and uh, hopefully... I'll still be able to use this center stand because one of my favorite things that pr I probably use it all the time is center stand. Um, I can I can go on and on talk about the benefits of center stand, but I'm probably not going to do that in this video. Uh, <laughs> And uh, with this cut out, as you can see, I got a ooh, still a finger in there. So the center stand works. Yay. And the last bracket that you'll have to install for this kit are these arms that connect to the frame. Um, I do want to quickly point out these are not included in the kit. These are aftermarket engine guards that I purchased myself. Um, so if, if you have these on installed, you'll be simply mounting these brackets on top of these engine guards and a quick tip as you're installing this last bracket uh, make sure you pull it to the highest point and then tighten the bolt reason for that is um, this bracket actually contacts the crankcase the engine right 
So as crank rotates, the engine will vibrate. And if this bracket is touching uh, the engine, the bracket is going to vibrate as well. Um, it will also transfer the heat from the engine to the bracket. And of course, the heat is not going to travel that far. Uh, but still, pull it to the highest point, tighten the bolt down. It should be clearing uh, barely a hair or two, and it should be good. Something that can be neglected while installing this kit is your clutch cable. Um, now, because we moved the clip-ons down from the factory location, it actually forced the clutch cable to bend and touch the engine. Now, with of course, with the engine heat, uh, the, the clutch cable boot is going to get eaten up. And the magic of zip ties, as you can see, I have a room of a finger going down between the engine case and the clutch cable. So, yeah, I don't have to worry about the heat now. All right, guys, so in order to tie in the side panel, you got to bolt these top ones to start with. And then this bolt ties in with the bracket we were talking about earlier. And then the bottom one ties in with the belly panel. And then you have two in the front on each side. Um, they'll tie everything together. The left side worked perfectly fine. However, I am struggling with the right side a bit. Um, the holes are not aligning as you would want them to be. Um, and I took this on and off a couple times, but uh, the trick, I guess, is to loosely tighten everything up. And then once all the holes align, hopefully, <laughs> then, then start tightening from bottom up. All right, guys, I guess I'm just not having it today. The little bracket, radiator bracket cracked on me. So I created my own <laughs> with this. X web slash tie it to the top. Um, so yeah, if you if you guys are in need of any zip tying work, uh, you know where to find me. <laughs> Alright, guys. So this sums up part one, part two, part three. As far as material, I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Uh, looks killed it. Fitment thumbs down. Engineering could have been better, um, but it is definitely a head turner for sure now. Now, before I got into this uh, whole YouTube thing, you know, as an audience before, I really admire those folks that gave their honest opinion as they were creating the content or any product they were showcasing. Um, and I'm going to do the same because I came from the audience perspective to a content creator. Would I recommend this? Uh, it comes down to... Is it worth it? My worth it and your worth it can be two different things. Uh, would I recommend it? No. Uh, the price point that it cost to get this shipped. Uh, and my biggest critique with this kit was the alignment issues, the brackets. Uh, as you probably know, I've mentioned those throughout part one, part two, part three videos. Now, if I were to do this all over again, I would most likely uh, invest in the headlight fairing. I would not put my money for the side panels and the belly. Uh, few reasons. It, it also comes down to maintenance, you know. So think about if you're trying to do an oil change. Uh, there's no way to access the oil filter or the, on the bottom. You'll have to take out the belly uh, as well as the side panels because both of those are tied in. So... And then once again, when you got to reinstall those, aligning those holes will be another challenge. So, yeah, so if I were if I would recommend it, I would say definitely spend, invest your money. Um, if you want to go for the looks for for the headlight fairing, I would avoid the side panels and belly. Also, what I do want to try out right now, um, I want to remove these side panels and leave the belly and the headlight fairing and i want to give that a shot do a couple test drives see how that handles by itself uh if if it does vibrate a lot then i might be designing some sort of brackets that might tie in with the engine guard now you might be wondering what's next you know because uh the fairings in the seat cows in mufflers exhaust headers lights leds 
mirrors, clip-ons, you know, I'm, I'm checking the list here, uh, but this is not the end of this. Uh, my goal with this is to make it as personalized as I can, and this fairing is not going to stay black. Um, it is going to have the same pattern that I did with the CCAL. It is going to have some chrome. It is going to have some gold pinstriping and a little bit of black also. Um, and then after that, you know, my game plan is to throw some fat tires, uh, both front and rear. That is going to give it some aggressive look. Because right now, what it looks like, the body, the frame, the structure of the, the bike seems a bit bigger. And the tires are really, really skinny. So, but again, you got to think about a lot of those, a lot of things when you're trying to make that change because how it's going to handle with the fat tires, the acceleration, you know, the torque and all those aspects. So, so I'm going to do some of the homework here and take my time on this. I'm, I'm not rushing into it. Uh, but as far as looks, I would say killed it. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention in part two when I was installing the headlight fairing, you do lose your uh, signal blinkers because uh, you, you cannot mount them in the stock location anymore. Uh, there is a secondary spot mount location where you can uh, put the stock ones in. Uh, just giving it a thought how, it, how those blinkers are going to extend out is going to look really funny. Not my style. Um, what I'm going to do is I, I'm actually going to make a separate video on this. Uh, I got some bar and uh, uh, turn signals and those are really, really sleek. So I, I feel like those are going to be really flush against this panel. They're going to look super nice. I'm going to do the wiring of that. So yeah, it'll be a separate video on it. But yeah, that's just something that I missed out. So yeah, let me know in the comments, guys. What do you think about it? How do you think I did? And... Uh, if you would do it or, uh, you know, is it worth it to you or not? I would really love to know that. Um, and if you guys have done something similar, did you also have those alignment issues? Or was I the chosen one? <laughs> Peace out.